Hey, this is Brett with Neo News Today, I'm joined by, I would have said Aphelion Dev, but now Aphelion Dev and Neo Core Dev, Jeff Selinski. Nice to have you on. It's great to be here. So, obviously, you're, you're pretty well known in the blockchain, the Neo blockchain community now because of all the contributions you've done, but I want to know, you know, where's your background? How did you get into all this? Well, to begin with, uh, I was working actually at for Amazon. I'd been following blockchain stuff for quite a while and I wanted to take it to more than just a hobby but I kind of didn't know how, how would I do that mm -hmm. and so a co-worker actually said have you ever heard of this project and then I ended up meeting some of the people that were running the project mm -hmm. and that led to hey do you kind of would you be willing to come over and lead this development and um, I mean I asked for a good good amount to do that because I'm leaving a big company and everything. I've been programming for a long time since I was 11. I've been doing an industry since uh, let's about I did 10 years at another company before I went to Amazon, so like 15 years in in development. Mm -hmm. And so um, when I accepted that at Affiliate, uh, I was just working on building out on top of Neo because that was what they had chosen for for some good reasons. Like the finality really helps an exchange that's mm -hmm. trying to be a DEX. Uh, and to do it initially on chain, so they they first built a built something on chain, but in the in the process of doing that, you know, I started to become aware of some of the things on Neo that could be improved in the core, mm -hmm. because we built everything on top of the core uh, from the very beginning. I wanted to build things close to the core, so that if there was anything that's wrong, that I'd be close to being able to fix it. Sure. And that led to some of the PRs that I had, mm -hmm. and then it led to being able to. Uh, kind of just get in there and start throwing in changes. Cool, so I mean, uh, what we've seen now is obviously Neo came out with their kind of core developer initiative. You are one of the, uh, how many are you, how many are there in the group now? Um, let's see, like the, the exact number, there might be like seven or so mm -hmm. uh, approximately. You, you and can these also are all look, around the world, right? Right, they're around the world. And if you go to like Neo's page now, they have a lot of the pics of some of the core developers up there. And it's just like what you were saying, it's the ones that have been contributing the most toward it. All right, cool. So before we get into all that juicy stuff, do you want to talk to us a little bit about Affiliate and what's going on over there? Um, yeah, so uh, Affiliate, they took a kind of the approach, and some people will say, well, um, don't even release anything until it's like completely perfect or whatever. But mm -hmm. Affiliate, like from the beginning, they wanted to involve the community. Mm -hmm. So uh, even the early releases, like they, they just they threw it out there. There were some problems in, in Neos early on and some of those things, but mm -hmm. it was out there, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and there were some little gotchas with UTXOs and you know certain things. So so the, the, when they first released the very first decks it was like a race to release that thing. And mm -hmm. it came out and it, it, it worked, mm -hmm. um, but there was like definitely certain gotchas here and there. Mm -hmm. And so they've, they've been constantly improving fixes, but it was, there was a lot of like monkey wretches, so to speak. You sure. might remember, um, you might remember whenever like the whole thing came out with Ether Delta. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like when that I came- was, That was worrying for everyone, I think. All the people involved with Dexas got pretty concerned at that point. Yeah, exactly, and and that was not any different for Affiliate. Like, mm -hmm. um, basically, they they stopped right at mm -hmm. that point in time. At that point, some people, like even some of the the leaders of it, were like, "Can we continue?" Mm -hmm. Like, are, and um, it's kind of weird for a Dex to have KYC, right? Sure. So, like, um, like here, this is this is this is a crypto. Like, mm -hmm. why do we need KYC, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, but that was the the path forward for being being that the owners were in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Like, that was the path forward. So, they implemented the the KYC. Actually, I, um, I, I I led that development as well. About one month from the time that we closed to coming out with the KYC solution that really does a lot of what like Bridge Network and some other people are doing. It, it in the sense that it um, it does KYC with the provider and then it hashes stuff and it doesn't actually store your information in its backend. It just stores like it has salted hash. They go in the chain. Mm -hmm. It's kind of done the right way. And, and in the future, the um, affiliate may you know team with them and be able to like accept if you've already done KYC through uh, cool. Bridge Network. Um, also, the, there's uh, developments going on, continuing toward the design for the cross-chain mm -hmm. solution. So you're asking sure. about Affiliate. Mm -hmm. um, and that's continued. There's gone through some iterations. Um, uh, there's, we know about other projects out there that you know are doing things, and sure. and uh, just you want to be able to to still compete in the space. Mm -hmm. um, so offer something unique. Right, exactly. And so I think we won't do definitely won't do things exactly the same. Uh, I think there's definitely space too for more than one Dex to exist out mm -hmm. there. Um, and and um, I'm also excited just as being a, a core developer now. And and uh, I know Affiliate has uh, a lot that's going on for it uh, and and going forward. But for me, a lot of a lot of my time now is going to be. Um, um, as a core dev. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, core development wise, you had quite a lot of contributions over the course of 2018, which all seemed to kind of culminate in the mempool changes, which I think has been 
one of the most long-standing issues of any blockchain that I've seen so far. And we've seen like, for example, during ICOs, during uh, any kind of heavy network load that we'd start seeing issues with NEO's block times. And that all kind of stemmed from this one place. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about those changes? Yes, uh, definitely. So. Just like you were saying, the, the consensus would get held up because consensus nodes would be so busy processing transactions. And um, one of the, the key things that ha was happening there is priority inversion. And priority inversion is like where the priority of what should be high transactions kind of gets inverted because you have this huge queue of transactions in general. Mm -hmm. And uh, so to fix that, the, the memory pool needed to not like re-throw all the unverified transactions back into the pool every mm -hmm. single block. Mm -hmm. uh, and so to do that, you, you kind of need to know, okay, first of all, what are the highest priority transactions in the pool mm -hmm. so they stay sorted? Then you can just pick out just the ones that are definitely going to make it into the block to mm -hmm. verify first, and then verify the other ones lazily. That allows you to throw away the ones that are bad. It mm -hmm. uh, allows you to, to do what you need to do while still being able to um, also keep the ones that are unverified in the pool. So if somebody bombards you and says, hey, here's some more transactions again, you don't say, oh, I don't know about those. You just say, I know about those transactions, go away, yeah. right? <laughs> and so it keeps it um, from spamming the chain. And then also, whenever a block does happen, it's possible that your unverified transactions didn't make it to other nodes, but you don't have to tell them about it every block. Mm -hmm. So it uses a nicer algorithm to say, we re transmit those transactions over a period of time based upon how big the mempool is, mm -hmm. based upon you know whether or not like it really needs to be done, right? And so by doing that, the whole ecosystem, it's, it goes from like, before there were some concerns because basically when you had high, low priority transactions, it's like the network could DDoS itself. Really. Yeah, sure. And so now that that's going away. And um, with the next release, nodes will be able to upgrade and we'll definitely see the network get, get better. And there's also been consensus improvements going on. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll, uh, some of those details, maybe not talking about too much today, but it's, it's basically, we can say, it's in PR mm -hmm. right now. Cool. And the fork block problem will not be a problem in the future. That's good to hear. And it's actually really awesome. It's something that, I, that really appealed to me about NEO, is that you have all these different development communities. But previously, a lot of them were all kind of focusing on building their own tools, their own SDKs and things that people can make use of to do dApps. But actually, now we have a lot of the major changes coming to the blockchain are actually coming from people outside of the original Shanghai dev team, right? So, uh, I mean, as a core developer, what kind of, uh, which of the repos are you guys mostly focused on? Well, we're focused on the ones that are mostly in C Sharp, because that's what the consensus nodes run. So you've got the, uh, the Neo, Core, which is the library that really has all of the guts of everything in it, and mm -hmm. that's where I spend most of my time. Mm -hmm. um, then there's also like Neo CLI sits on top of that and mm -hmm. gives you the main functionality for a CLI. I've also been doing some changes there, like I have uh, a PR that's kind of been sitting out for a little while, so you can deploy contracts directly from the Neo CLI. Cool. Um, that's that's in PR. Mm -hmm. um, there's some other changes there to to give it a little more uh, power. And then of course the VM is part of the core as well. That's one of the areas I haven't focused on quite as much because mm -hmm. I've been fo focused a lot on network improvements. Like I definitely mm -hmm. think you probably see a little more network improvement type stuff. Um, Neo is really focused on the corporate mm -hmm. type of uh, users mm -hmm. and really making something that can be used in business and the smart economy. Mm -hmm. And just kind of catching that vision, I'm the kind of person that's like, give me the biggest problem. Yeah. Let me, let me know what the biggest problem is and I'm going to go after that. Sure. So, I mean, from your perspective, where are we going from here? Like, I mean, everyone's pretty excited for the memory pool changes now that I guess that they have more of a context around what it can do. I mean, that's potentially setting things up for, I mean, improved stability could mean lower block times, could mean higher number of transactions per block. Like, where are the possibilities here? Um, I think where we're going from here, once we get these consensus transaction, uh, consensus changes in and get some other, uh, along with memory pool and some of these things that are coming, we're going to be able to see a blockchain that really could start being used in commerce. Uh, right. I, th I think that like, yes, you can only, you, not everybody can be on, on a chain for every transaction they make, but mm -hmm. there, you can tell that NEO is focused on the future. Mm -hmm. And the uh, state channel type solutions on top of NEO, um, they would make it possible. And you could say, well, state channel will work for everyone, but nowhere else will you be able to open a channel as quick as NEO. Sure. Because NEO has finality. And mm -hmm. um, there have been some, you know, kind of digs against uh, Neo's, like, yeah, finality at what cost, but 
really when it comes down to it, and this isn't so well publicized, but I think in the future you'll see some things coming out that will explain how NEO really will be decentralized as well as distributed. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of something that annoys me personally, is that you have a lot of blockchains that advocate being you know, fully decentralized, or proof of work based, proof of state based, but they actually, just due to economies of scale, end up being delegated in their own way anyway. So I think there's an argument to be made that for real decentralization, actually intentionally delegating and ensuring that each party that is running a consensus node has an equal say to each other party, it could actually open things up to be more decentralized than any existing platform. Yeah, and, and to go along with that, um, really, and Neo, while Neo, it seems like they have a lot of the voting power right now, but even mm -hmm. the actual code is voting, right? Sure. From the beginning, Neo's actually voted the consensus nodes. And you can say, well, there's only a few. Well, think about this, right? They're, they're, once the, these consensus changes, which you're going to hear about real soon, a lot more, um, go in, you're going to be able to have more consensus nodes. And mm -hmm. you're, it's going to be easy for the operators to operate them. And mm -hmm. the other thing about that is, um, that the wallets themselves can vote for people. Think mm -hmm. about this, like different wallet operators, all the consensus messages are public. Mm -hmm. So they can see, see which consensus nodes are misbehaving. If a consensus node was going to say, well, like you say it's not decentralized, it is, it will be, because think about this. If a node stops verifying transactions, everybody can see that. Mm -hmm. The wallets will be able to say, it'll be like just a switch in the wallet. You say, I want to auto vote my NEO for the nodes that are doing a good job. If sure. they go offline, you stop voting for them. Mm -hmm. um, and while NEO holds a lot of the NEO today, right? Mm -hmm. They hold a large amount. Um, they will not always hold a large amount. Or they will not always hold enough that they have like full control. Yeah, I mean, it's nice that they don't have a majority still, yes. but I guess as time goes on, that funding goes back into the community, we see their stake diminished. And I guess what really matters then is making sure that when people do go voting for consensus nodes, they're able to make an informed decision. So then it becomes like a, a UI problem, right? It's for wallets, they need to make sure they're representing all the information in a way that can be easily accessed. Is this something that Aphelion is looking into? Are they gonna have like voting uh, support? Yes, actually, uh, something I've been thinking about and something that uh, Aphelion definitely would do is um, allowing, having like a service where, you know, they'll tell you, hey, this is how much percent of the time these nodes are actually validating the transactions. Cool. So you would be able to say like, do it yourself or maybe just turn it on auto. We'll pick the ones, pick the ones that are doing a great job, right? Sure. Um, and I think that there's definitely some, uh, uh, nothing's finalized or anything, but it's definitely something that Affiliate's thinking about. Cool. Well, do you have anything else you want to share with the new community before we wrap up? Um, you know, I think the community should be really excited about this year. Uh, from last year, there's there were a number of times where you know I think I can honestly say that yes, there were some problems with the Neo network, mm -hmm. but there is a number of them that have already been fixed. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're a node operator today, you'll notice your 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 node doesn't get behind the chain as often, and mm -hmm. part of that is because of some of the work like myself. Uh, and other core developers have done to really make the, the network more stable. And I think with this next set of changes and this next release, you're gonna see a whole new level of stability in the NEO network, and this year is going to bring some very, very amazing developments. Cool, and it's probably nice to know for people that this isn't something they have to wait for NEO 3.0, these are improvements coming to the chain as it is right now. That's correct, yes. Uh, they're gonna be on this chain, but NEO 3.0 still has a little road to go. But even while, sure. it's, while we're waiting for that, we're gonna see the opportunity for real usage even on two. Cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Jeff. And of course, if you want to catch up with more of our DevCon content, you can head over to our Twitter page, youtube.newnisday.com. Thanks again for coming on. Thank you.